Have a look at this place, my friends. I know, extremely breathtaking. I'm standing at the start of Top of the World Mountain Bike Trail, located in hands down one of my favorite summer winter playgrounds, Whistler Mountain Resort. Now, where I am standing is about 7,500 feet above sea level, but if I start down this trail, I make my way into the world famous Whistler Mountain Bike Park. Miles and miles of some of the best groomed trails that you can find. And at the base of the mountain, well, it's pretty much the perfect place for the entire mountain bike community to gather for Crankworks, the largest collection of mountain bike events on this earth. And we, as in you and I, we are here for the Marquee event, where literally 25,000 humans will form basically a human arena to watch the best slopestyle riders in the world take on the best slopestyle course on this earth. Are you ready? Good, because this is Joyride at Crankworks Whistler, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Sal Masekela here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you once again to the amazing Whistler Mountain Resort, nestled here in the Fitzsimmons Range of beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Now, this is a well-known winter wonderland, but it is also the summer home to the world's largest celebration of mountain biking culture anywhere, Crankworks Whistler. Every summer for over a decade now, riders from around the planet and every discipline of riding set together to compete in front of literally tens of thousands of passionate fans. Now this is actually a 10-day festival of non-stop competition that culminates with today, Red Bull Joyride. It is the slope style event of the season. In front of these many thousands, today's competitors, they have a simple task. Unleash your best possible run while incorporating the biggest and most progressive tricks, and you can win this thing. It is finals time, so we're going to check in with Todd Harris and Kenan Harkin on exactly what we can expect from this level of competition. Gentlemen. Thank you, Sal. 30,000 of our closest friends have turned out to see the very best here at Whistler & Cannon. This is somewhat of a bucket list option for guys that are in this world. Absolutely. A win here at Joyride is very prestigious. Now, there are some riders in the competition that have won twice, but no one has won it three times. Now, to do that, the judges are going to be really watching these guys ride. They are going to be looking for amplitude, how high they're going. They're looking for the trick difficulty, variety of tricks, the execution. Is it being pulled off clean? Course use progression, what's new out there, and of course, risk taking, which in my opinion, just rolling into this course is one big risk. So we are in store for a fantastic event today. I'm very excited, Todd. This course is an absolute beast. Remember, it's two runs. We only keep your best score and reverse order in run number two, and it's all out of 100. 100 being the perfect score. Before we get to the competition here in Whistler, we now check in with a third member of our broadcast team, Say hello to Tina Dixon. As a spectator here in Whistler, when you first look up at this mountain, one of the things you see is this big cabin behind me, but it is not your average weekend getaway cabin. Nope, this cabin is all about these professionals getting on top of it, all while doing a couple technical tricks. Now, Cam McCall described it to me as intimidating, but not so much that you can't get after it. And this is just one of 11 features for these professionals to showcase their skill set in front of these judges. And in talking to the riders, they all love the course. The weather is good. There's a slight breeze with potential for the wind to get worse but guys right now it's a go 
All right, thank you very much, Tina. More for you later on. We start things off with 21-year-old Carson Storch out of Bend, Oregon. He made this short trek up from the Pacific Northwest, and what an opportunity for this newcomer right now, Ken, as he drops in on this mammoth of a course. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Now, this rider started when he was two years old, jumping off low ramps, and as you'll see, with this first, uh, this very first jump here, it's not little. So watch this drop. They're going to go for something big. 360, and he connects perfectly, and now he's into his run. Now, watch every jump they have to do some kind of trick a 360 tail whip we are off to a great start this 21 year old showing what he's made of so Storch on the course his first of two runs and what you're telling me basically on each jump you cannot have just a straight air and that's what we just had Carson that's gonna cost him because as you'll see as the list of riders progresses there are going to be tricks and riders that pull off every single obstacle so important. Nice tail whip, gets it back on that hip, and he flows down to the bottom half of the course, up on the cabin. Natina was talking about 360 up. What's he got? An opposite 360 back down. Very technical trick. Very strong performance so far. Let's talk about the rhythm and flow that you mentioned. How important is it for these guys to get into a good rhythm or flow throughout this course as he comes through the finish? Well, listen, bottom line, man, if you miss one trick, it could it could spell disaster a few jumps down. Keeping your speed's important and keeping just that mental rhythm. When you miss a trick and you're up there, man, that just detunes you. But coming in, a nice 360 off this drop. About a 15-foot drop in height. You're looking about 20 foot from peak to peak there. Bar spin to one-hander. More of a mellow trick off that jump. Expect to see more uh, definitely some bigger tricks pulled today, but a good start for the 21-year-old at a Bend, Oregon with this opposite 360. Very technical trick. Judges are going to like that. A little 360 tabletop for good measure. So again, we'll be building as this event continues. So 21-year-old Carson Storch out of Bend, Oregon sets the mark to beat. His score coming in as a 60. But remember, it is a two-run format, and we only keep your best score. Right now, let's take a closer look at what most riders are saying is the best course in the history of slope style. Hey, hey, I'm Jeff Gulovich, and this is the course preview of the Red Bull Joyride course. Let's go. Run, 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 run. Oh, really? Boom. So just rolling into this. Pretty basic. Got a fun little roller you can manual through. Keep some mellow speed here. Nice drop to start. Then we got this cool up wall feature that I always overshoot. Again, goes into a killer step up jump. Love that thing. Onto the SRAM wall ride. Big jumps! Fun jump, you can whip it right out. You got pumped for the next one. Totally awesome though. So good. Dialed right hand broom here. Air off. Yeah. Fun hip. Oh. Always whip that out. Right onto the cabin. Take a mellow stroke off the drop. Then we got this cool toilet bowl feature right at the BMX world. Then we got the last feature here. Well built. Cool cabin drop in and out. Just flow right on through it. Then you burn your way down to the finish where you have cupcakes and high fives. This is Joyride, part of the Red Bull Signature Series, and you are looking at Thomas Lamont of France, just 17 years of age. He is the youngest competitor in this field, Kenny, but this guy has all kinds of skill. He definitely does, and he got that skill from riding BMX bikes. And you can hear a lot of these riders talk about their beginnings on BMX. The difference is with that that foundation of the BMX riding, once you get to the mountain bikes and slope style, it is an entirely different size. How about a 360? Again, a lot of riders like to start off with a big trick. 360X up here as Tomas gets into the juiciness of his run. A nice, three, what was that? It looked like a tail whip backflip. Unreal, I love that trick, so sick. He's really flowing now. Going for a tuck no-handed backflip as we move into the midsection of the course. Watch some of these obstacles. So this is run number one for Lamoine, and he is off to a great start in front of the 30,000 fans here at Whistler. Whips up onto the cabin, and 360 drops off of it 
and I'm seeing him as he just look at his speed. He's mocking through the centrifugal toilet bowl. That's what the guys are calling that berm there. No hander up and a backflip off. Now, he would have wanted to do some kind of variation. That's what the judges are looking for. A straight backflip, not necessarily one of those big marquee tricks. But looking back on his run, he definitely had a solid one. And that's why he's throwing his hand off the bars there. It's great to get down. So there's a 360 drop, and he sets himself up. You were talking about rhythm before, Todd. This is what we're talking about. He wants to land high so he can get off that next feature and get that X up 360. And this, I love it. No hander, just leaving it off while he's upside down. No handed tuck backflip. And then he pulls the straight backflip to finish things off. I guarantee you in his second run, he is going to be adding a variation to that. He sets the new mark to beat a 73.60, but a lot of talent still to come down the mountain here at Whistler. Right now, let's check in with Sal Masakela for more on our next competitor to drop in here at Crankworks, Brett Reeder. At 21 years old, it would seem that Brett Reeder is a little bit too young to be on a comeback trail. But for Brett, 2013 was actually a challenging year as he was forced to watch Red Bull Joyride from the sidelines with a broken back. Made more difficult was the fact that he was actually atop of the FMB leaderboard coming into last year's event. This year, Reeder is once again healthy and riding strong, and he carries the confidence of already having wins in his pocket this season. So there's no question that redemption for last year is weighing heavily on his mind. Brett's been riding his bike since he's about four. Didn't take long to get the training wheels off, and off he went. He started building little, you know, dirt jumps and wooden ramps, and then one thing led to another. Brett Reeder! Last year, yeah, insane season. Flip wheel! Best season, for sure. And then I got shut down. To another oh. This was my first big injury. And uh, at first, it was almost a relief when I, when I broke my back and when I was lying in that hotel bed, I almost felt relieved. Such a heated season, you know, people like Brandon. Brandon Semenuk, so many podiums, the most out of any slope style rider. I mean, it's pretty much just Brandon, but when you have people like him to compete against, it's, it's not easy, it's hard. So I felt relieved. But two weeks after, when I got home, that's when it really started to set in how much I loved the sport and how much I wanted to get back into it. And, you know, it was a slow recovery. It was very hard because he just wanted to get back on his bike every day and he was always asking his doctor and always going for checkups, seeing like, when can I get back on my bike? When can I do it? But you, you have to let yourself heal, otherwise it's just going to happen again. I got the okay and I was like, okay, back to it. And it definitely messes with your head. It was hard going back to Vienna Air King this year. You got injured last year. I thought, oh my God, I, why am I even here right now? Like, I don't know if I can do my run right now. I can barely breathe. I'm shaking, you know? Canada, ultimate some track bicycles, Brett Reader. And I ended up taking the win for second year in a row. The last two contests have been better. I'm kind of overcoming that injury. You know, it's still, it's still a big fear it's still a big fear of, of breaking my back again. Like that's such a serious injury and I'm still out here and I'm doing like even more insane tricks. And yeah, like I get scared for sure. I'm scared. I, there's not, it's, I feel like there's not one day I don't think of myself like, like paralyzed, you know, like, and being up against, uh, you know, dudes like Brandon who, you know, it's almost like it doesn't phase them. It's hard. So here we go, Brett Reeder, just 21 years of age, and Kenny, he's coming off the four compression fractures in his upper back. He's got to put that all behind him. This is his first of two runs. I think it illustrates just how dangerous, you know, we, we sit here and we laugh and we have fun watching this, but the truth of it is, this is an extremely dangerous sport, and these riders have put it all out on the line. And man, Brett, what a way to start things. Look at this, getting into two very difficult tricks, truck driver into a front flip. This guy is on. This is exactly what a true professional needs to do. You get injured, you've got to put it out of your head for the moment you're on the bike. And I Man. just can't believe it. A 720 off-axis 720 or a 360 flip, you can call it both. 
incredible run we have building by Brett Reeder. Huge amplitude as Reeder makes his way down the course. Remember, the mark to beat is a 73.6, and he has already done some fantastic work. You know what? He's beaten that mark already with the amount of tricks that he squeezed into this run as he goes into the toilet feature of the berm here. It's such a funny name, but there's nothing funny about this run. Final hit for Reeder. Yes! Tail whip backflip to finish things off. Reader, this is going to be your new leader. And what an amazing weight off this young rider's mind. And as I was saying at the top, that's what gets you to become a true professional, being able to put those thoughts out of your head for the moment you're on the course. And from the top, he started with a massive trick. Look at how he yanks this backflip with no lip off that drop. You really have to just muscle it around. And then, just two jumps later, he goes the opposite direction with a front flip, nicely tucked, and then he extends the landing gear perfectly for that downside. But that's not all. Reader was on fire. Backflip off the features and also bar spin up, but that's insane in itself. But getting down, how about a truck driver or a 360 bar spin? Very exciting run. I love this guy's style. And I'm just so happy that this guy was able to overcome and lay down a solid run. Man, we have got an exciting competition building because you know what? If I'm Brandon Semenuk, I'm going to be a little bit nervous about what I have to do to take the win. Well, let's not forget, last year he had to watch this event with the four compression fractures in his upper back, stood alongside and watched someone else take it. And here nice. it is, 94.20. Your new leader is Brett Reeder. So a stellar performance for the young Canadian as he brings it down. He goes into first place. But remember, it's a two-run format. He's standing by with Tina. And Brett, you stood on the sidelines last year with a broken back. But your first run, you wowed not only the judges, but the crowd with a 94.20. How relieved are you right now? I think I shocked myself, too. When, I, when we're up at the top, we don't know if we're going to be able to get all the way down. It's such a long course, but it uh, feels amazing just to be down here. And there's so many jumps that you can trick. You got another run. What else is in store? Oh, I don't know. I, I got a few things if I need them. We'll see, though. I mean, we'll see how Brandon does. We'll see how all those top guys do. Well, great first run and setting the new score, guys. Thank you very much, Tina. So he is your leader with a 94-2-0. How about this guy from France, 27-year-old Yannick Grenieri? This guy has got some serious roots in cycling. His grandfather owned and manufactured bicycles back in France, and he's been on a bicycle since he is seven years old. And he is now dropping into the first obstacle, and I love watching him ride big, burly style. Very confident on the bike as well, Todd. All right, you look at his run. It's just getting started off in its infancy here. But remember what Reader threw down early on, a 94.2 on Ken. And as you pointed out, his flow and amplitude early on was massive. Wow, but you know what? We have some big moves out of Granieri here and just a huge off-axis 360 into that tailway backflip. And the run is not, not even halfway done. So here's Granieri. This is run one of two, trying to take down Brett Reader's 94.2. But here, here's where it's starting to mellow out, and you just can't afford to do, like, you know, a one-footed whip. Uh, you know, you're really going to have to answer to what Reader put down. And I'm not seeing that in the lower portion of this run right now. Let's see if we finish. See, again, it's not going to do it in 2014 at Joyride. With the level of competition we have, Kenan, in this course, is a backflip just a stock trick now? You know, actually, yes, a backflip is a stock trick. In fact, 360 backflips, or the 720 corks we're seeing in BMX, riders are actually taking their hands off. So there's some progression that just is always happening. Looking back on his run, though, I love the style of his 360 tail whip. Very uh, kind of barrel roll-esque. And how about a barrel roll with an X up? So, you know, he definitely has a deep list of tricks, a no-footed double seat grab onto the cabin, and then he does a tail whip right off of it. So he's got some great tricks, but as we saw with Reader's Run, there was just so much top to bottom, and many of the backflips had variations. So that's going to help Reader score, and he needs a little help on that next run, in my opinion. Brett Reader with the mark to beat a 94.2. Yannick Grenieri's score comes down. It's a 61.40, so he will most definitely look to run number two in our two-run format where we only keep your best score. 
We're halfway through run number one, and this next competitor is someone you should definitely be excited to see. Cam Zink, the 28-year-old from Reno, Nevada, knows exactly what he needs to do. The mark to beat right now, Kenan, is a 94.20 put up by Brett Reeder. Well, listen, he's no stranger to going big, but I want you to look at the back end of his bike. He's riding a hardtail, not something you see Cam Zink ride all the time. So we're going to be in for a treat here at Joyride, and we're just whipping a backflip right away. Crazy. Oh, and you see the rhythm was broken. And that's because he landed too low on that second jump. And look at how it just rips away the speed and his potential to actually do tricks. Superman backflip. Mm. Man, Cam's not having a good time here today. I hope he's all right. So the hardtail bike, no rear suspension for Cam Zink. And run number one has gone in a very bad way. Yeah, but anybody that does backflips off of 50 foot drops at Rampage gets a pass in my opinion. So the Superman secret, that's where things went wrong. Keep your eye on the back wheel, you see that? Now on this next shot, we're gonna watch it all the way through. I want you to focus on the rear wheel. He gets the grab, but he's over rotating a little bit and he just hits it real hard, slips a pedal and not able to continue. His score will be a 30.40, so he will look to run number two, the champion of 06 and 2010 on to his second and final run as we get a look at Nikolai Rogotkin, the 18-year-old out of Lincoln, Mass. 18 years old, as you said, and, you know, I got to think about a young rider watching a uh, reader and coming up or standing up next to that drop with Seminuk, knowing what these guys are going to pull out, you cannot hold back. And he does not. A different... A different approach here off that boot or off that drop. You can see him, he just goes for the tail whip and he's into his run, a double tail whip, wow. backflip, and he gets it. This is what I'm talking about, the young rider really stepping up here at the top part and a long dart front flip. I love the way he initiates it. And the cash roll, I'm sorry, I need some oxygen. Take over for a second. Ragotkin absolutely tearing up this course at just 18 years of age. Can he hold it together and get a full pull to the bottom? We're talking about progression, Todd, and we have seen some progressive moves and some originality out of this young rider. The cash roll, originally done by Daniel Dares on BMX, now being done oh. by this rider, and he goes down. This would have been an incredible run. So Ragotkin had everything going but cannot hit the landing and run number one comes to a conclusion for him, but the makings, as you said, oh, Kenan, of maybe the best run of the day. It was so exciting from this young rider, crowd on their feet as they should be. So the double tail whip backflip squeezes it around. Not easy to do with those big mountain bike wheels. Backflips up onto the cabin, and then he gets on off of it with a tail whip going for it, but unfortunately he slides off, but man, he had so many amazing tricks. Watch the foot, left foot. He just collapses there, wasn't able to stabilize himself, and that's why he spilled over. I can't wait for a second run. A 51.40 does Nikolai Rogotkin no good as we take a look at our leader, Brett Reeder, with a 94.20, then Lamont and Logan Pete, your top three. So here we go with 18-year-old Anthony Missouri from right here in British Columbia, set to go. Now, Ken, this is one of those situations, this kid is absolutely going to light up this mountain or he's going to probably end in a pile of dust. Well, you know what? You heard him in that piece talk about a little bit of a maturity come into his riding, and that's about being a little bit more of a chess player than a hucking and hoping kind of guy. So let's see which Anthony Missouri we're going to see today. Tail whip off that gap, excuse me, off the drop. He yanks it into a truck driver. So he's really nice, solid, no-handed front flip, almost lands back wheel too much. Easy to loop out in that regard. But yeah, Missouri's off to a great start, Todd. I like the flow. We still need to see a little bit more of that amplitude as far as um, the variations and the height of some of these tricks. Single tail whip, man, he's gonna really need to squeeze a few more tricks out. 94.20 is the mark to beat put up by Canadian Brett Reeder, who's down at the bottom waiting for his second run. But this is Missouri. Wow, the tour leader in FMB having a good second half. Yeah, definitely. You know, this is a good, what I would consider a confidence booster here. He's laying down that solid first run, get all the butterflies out, and then get back up there the second run and really open it up. So one run complete for Missouri. There's Rita, the current leader. The big question now for the young man who comes from nearby Surrey, did he do enough? You know, in my opinion, I don't think it's enough to unseat our current leader. However, there, as I mentioned, you know, he did throw some stellar tricks like this tuck, no-handed front flip, but you just see a little bit, the foot comes off, doesn't touch. Little bit of bobbles, nice 
off-access rotating 360 table there, almost into a barrel roll style. He definitely belongs on the podium. It's just a matter of finding that run. And his score an 82.40, so he doesn't overtake Rita, but a good score. And he's standing by with Tina. Anthony, one of the few riders up to this point to make it from the top to bottom. You're sitting in second, but give us your strategy on that run. Oh, uh, well, you know, I just wanted to, it's pretty windy right now, and I hadn't really ridden the course as much as I uh, planned on, so I just wanted to get a safe run, make it here to the bottom, get some score in, and then, uh, you know, maybe up some things for the second run and try to get a higher score. Yeah, and you're coming into this event off of a big win. A lot of people are looking at you. How is the confidence now for that second run? Uh, you know, the confidence, it, it helps a little bit, but it definitely makes it more stressful, you know, because everybody's expecting so much more. So it's a little bit of both. You got one more. Have some fun. So Brett Reeder's in first place. Anthony Mazzari sits in second place as we go back to the top of the course. This is Tomas Janone out of Belgium, just 19 years of age. Certainly, Kennedy, he has the skills to throw down a 94.21, which would put him into first place. Well, this, this is a rider who has won this event. So, I mean, yeah, he definitely has the skills. Again, just seeing what has happened already and the progression that Reeder threw down, it's do I have it today to get it done? And we've seen this trick, uh, you know, dropping in with the 360. Double tail was squeaking it out. Really nicely done from the young Belgian rider. Over at, oh. oh man, that's, see, that's where you get the nerves. A little too much emphasis on that twist. And he winds up doing a little too much. And as you see, he just pulls out knowing he's not going to make it over that jump. So that's, um, you know, it's like better to stop than try and go for it and have to hit the eject button. But where did things go wrong? You see the double table, watch the landing. Okay, he gets up there high, but it's this next jump. Too much of a rotation on this 360. He looks like he was gonna do a variation and he mm. just over rotates by 90 degrees and that just ripped all his speed out of him. He's now saddled with a 22.80 on his first run, but he does have one more run. As you look at our current leader, Brett Reeder, 94.20. Right now, we send it over to Sal Masakela. To be the hometown favorite here at Red Bull Joyride is a definite advantage. But on the flip side comes that burden of heavy fan expectations and that pressure to win time and time again. Brandon Semenuk, this guy is still the favorite here at Joyride, having won the event in 2011 and again in 2013. And after back-to-back -back FMB World Tour Championships in 2011 and 2012, Semenuk decided, you know what, last year, take a break from a full year on tour. This year, he is back once again competing full-time and the Whistler native looks to become the only man in this sports history to get three wins at Joyride. The first slopestyle event I saw in Whistler was Joyride in like 2003. Ever since that, I went to every Crankworx event, every slopestyle event that was on that hill. So I was 14 years old when I first tried to qualify for Crankworx. In 07, I actually made the finals. I was uh, 16 years old and that was the first podium I ever got. Basically after that, riding slope style went from being a passion to being also a career. Randy, the local boy, Semina. Slope style has really taken a turn in the last couple of years. There's so many good riders now. Like Reader's another athlete to look at. He's one of the kids that motivates me to go out and like, you know, push myself and progress with like these long slope style courses. My goal with creating the yard was basically to have this perfect riding environment. Now I can wake up and be like, oh, like I want to learn this trick because there's a cool feature at this course that's the same thing and I can do the trick on. This is one of the last features we got here. It's just like a whale tail, like step up in, step down out. It's kind of similar to what a lot of Crankworx events have had. Learning new tricks is kind of just a motivation thing. The only way you're going to learn a trick is if you really, really want to do it. Sometimes it'll take weeks or months just to figure it out, do it once. With the amount of time and effort and practice he puts in, his track record is pretty insane. People have beat him, but it's more like him beating himself when he doesn't cross the finish line. Yeah, like crank works. There's something about it that just makes it so hard. Big boss spin 360. Oh! What a disappointment for the defending champion. He's either going to explode on the course in a bad way or explode on the podium with champagne in a great way. But this event's always been like just hit or miss. Like either I'm like 
first or I'm last. I'd love to be the first one to actually get three Crankworx wins. So Brett Reeder, all he can do is sit and watch his score a 94.20 as Brandon Seminuk, the 23-year-old from right here in Whistler, BC, gets set for his first of two runs. We've seen this guy implode at this event, and we've also seen him rise to the occasion. And it's going to be a toss of the dice to see which Brandon Seminuk is about to drop in right now. Now Certainly. remember, the last three years, Brandon has always crashed on his first run of two, but it's always been on the final feature. So if he can get a full pull here, this may be money. Oh man, he money was that can-can backflip off the drop-in, out of the gate, a double tail whip, backflip. We are off to a very strong start. Champion in 011 and 13. 360 backflip or the cork 720. Pick a name, it doesn't matter, the trick is insane. Going a different line there on that hip as he spins that tail whip, really locking into the, the berm here as he backflips up. And a fast plant 360, very original move. Judges are gonna like that little bit of style. A lot of creativity as he comes up to the final feature. Yes, and he pulls it down nicely. Another 720 cork or 360 backflip. Such a sick move. This is now a nail biter of a competition. What will the judges award him? Brett Reeder has the mark to beat a 94.20. Did Brandon Seminick do enough to move into first place? Well, let's look back at that litany of progression that we were just watching in that run. At the top, he cranks a backflip. Watch his foot. He pulls it over and kicks it over the left side of that bicycle. That's a can-can backflip. Very difficult to do when you have no lip to take off of. And a tuck 360. So you can see he's really put some style into these very big moves. A double tail whip, backflip, gets the pedals nicely and back to Mother Earth so he can set up, and I love the way he's doing these cork 720s. You'll hear me also call a 360 backflip. It's the same trick, folks. He is definitely going upside down on it, upside down onto the cabin as well. So I'm really excited about what I've seen, and certainly that little move there. Little, but big in the judge's eyes, that fast pant 360. Again, now watch this cork 720. He gets upside down. Watch him spot the landing and crank it. Crank that front wheel to the landing. That's how you do that trick, man. Bring it back to Mother Earth safely. And the score now coming in, and he goes hey. to the first. Brandon Seminook is your leader after one run, a 96.80. Well deserved for him in front of his home fans, and he's standing by with Tina. And Brandon, with a lot of eyes on you, you did that Cork 720 on the final feature. How close was that run to what you wanted to do? It's exactly what I went to do. Like, once I saw Reader's run, I was like, that's just what I have to do. I was, like, trying so hard to stay away from Cork 70 off that last step down just because it was one of the scariest things I've done, and I, like, didn't really want to do it again, but Reader put an insane run together, so... That was, that was what I needed. Well, you guys both have one more. What are your predictions for that second run? Uh, I'm pretty stoked that I get to watch him go again. So I kind of know, like, if he gets another run, I know where I got to up it. But we'll see, like, anything can happen, you know? Well, it's a huge score. Fantastic first run, guys. All right, thank you very much, Tino. One run is complete as we take a look at the standings. It is Brandon Seminook out in front. Brett Reeder sits in second, and Anthony Mazzari in third. But a lot of great talent on that leaderboard, Kenan. Who's going to step up and take it away from Brandon Seminook? Man, I really think it's between Brandon and Brett Reeder. It's a staring contest, and it's, it's just coming down to if Reeder is going to blink. Louis Rabot of France set to drop in on his second run knowing exactly what he needs to do. Now, this is really where it's gonna have to come down to everyone stepping up. You talk about not blinking here, Kenan. 96.80 is a huge score. Yeah, it might be just a little bit out of his reach currently for this rider. He is a very accomplished athlete. Big 360s, he drops in. He's gotta stay on the bike and basically have the run of his life. Nice style on that 360, kind of looking back a little bit on it as he hits around the SRAM wall. A tail whip, backflip over the big set of dubs. 
And a nice off-access 360. Love it. This guy's got such an amazing style. Everyone really enjoys watching him ride for that fluidity. And that's going to be something the judges are looking at. And will definitely help a big transfer here from one side of the hip all the way to the landing of the other. Up on top of the cabin, Kenny, you talked about his natural athletic ability. Who does better at this event, former BMX riders or mountain bike riders? You know what? It's a mashup. It's, it's definitely a BMX influence type course, but it's just the size factor. It's, you got to have you got to have nerves of steel to jump this stuff. Great run for him. Top to bottom, he stayed on. I don't think it's going to be enough to get into the top two. Francis Louis Rabot looking for a spot on the podium. Right now, the mark to beat is a 96.80. Had some good features in here, but was it enough? Was there enough sizzle in this run? Well, you know what? Look, we're looking at some serious progression from the top two riders. What we're seeing here is perfection from this rider, perfection of what is currently going on. There's no real envelope pushing. Now, that being said, I'm telling you this from the safety of an announcing booth. He is really going out there and risking it, albeit, fluidly. So the score coming down for Francis Louis Rabol, he picks up a 79.40 and that moves him into fourth place. His day is done. Yannick Granieri of France, 27 years of age, he dropped a 61.40 on run number one. So right now, realistically, is he looking for a podium spot because the top score is a 96.80. Yeah, everyone can get up there, you know, I don't think he's going to get to the top of the podium, but it is possible he squeaks in at third place. So a big 360 off the drop, getting into the run, starting things nicely, a tail whip. You know, I've seen other riders throwing two tail whips, but how about two Ooh. in a 360? So he's shut me up right now. Anytime you can do a tail whip while spinning 360, that's fantastic. Very nice as we get down to midsection and he loses it going into the berm. Carrying all kinds of speed. Grenieri now in trying to be salvage mode as he comes up on this big gap, lands that cleanly, but has he lost his line and his rhythm? Well, you know, it definitely affected speed. And now going for a front flip on top of the cabin. Have not seen that at all today. That was going to be the one that would open the eyes, the trick that would open the eyes of the judges. Instead, he's going to take a bow for this amazing crowd here at Whistler. Looking back on the run, he had the ingredients, a nice stylish off-axis X-up backflip, and he went right in to a tail whip backflip, but watch where he lands, nice and high, so he's keeping his speed, very important. And this, again, eyes on him as he gets the front flip. But watch, he's got to really squeak it out, and he loses his right hand, and that's what spilled him. Luckily, he didn't have far to fall. So Granary's second run does not turn into a full pole, uses a ladder to get off the cabin. A 41 does him no good. He will hold on to the 61.40 as we go back to the top of the course. And Logan Pete, another talented Canadian, coming out of Roberts Creek, just 24 years of age, run one score, 65.40. I got to tell you, the nerves of these guys as they drop in for these second runs, knowing they have to leave it all out. How about Logan Peake, though? Does he have a little bit of an advantage on the rest of the crew? Because his friend and roommate is our current leader, Brandon Seminuk. Well, you know, there's that definitely helps out. You know, maybe these guys talk about strategy. Exactly. Maybe they're going to, Brandon's going to tell him what he's doing. But, you know, what I really like from this rider, aside from the big bar spin backflips, is the opposite tricks that he did at the top of the course. Because judges like that. That signifies technicality and progression. Nice 360. So much going on in this run. I have to tell you. Pete is definitely going to be a threat here, if not today, certainly in the weeks and months to come. Logan Pete up onto the cabin. Just a few more features to go. This has been a pretty clean run so far. He's getting centrifugal here in this berm, man. It's like a centrifuge. All right, getting up to the final thing. Now, he should have did a trick there, but he's setting up not the strongest finish you would like to see for your second run here at Joyride. So two complete runs for Logan Pete. Remember, his first run score was a 65.40, and the mark to beat is a 96.80. Up top, nice bar spin backflip. Set himself up for the double tail whip on this second double here. So he got some great rhythm, some good tricks, put off on it. Coming up to the cabin, he did himself a little bit of a favor here. Bar spin. And an opposite 360. I was telling you about those opposite, those very technical tricks. Well, here he's taking a tech trick, but throwing it off the cabin makes it technical and burly.
And the score for Logan Pete, an 83.80, so that moves him into third place for the time being. So a strong performance by Logan Pete, a full pole top to bottom in a podium position, but still a lot of talent to come down the mountain. He's standing by with Tina. Well, Logan, you're sitting in the podium right now in third spot. What was the difference on that second round? Uh, I missed a few things on the first. Didn't have enough speed for that double whip, but got it and got that bar into the cabin, but still missed one thing. Kind of a bummer, but can't complain with sitting on the podium, so stoked. A lot more riders still to go, including one of your friends, Brandon Simonek. How, what do you predict is going to happen next? Uh, Brandon's going to sit up there, and he's going to hang out and see what Brett's going to do, and we might see him coming down doing whips for the crowd, or he might have to step it up, so we'll see. All right, well, there you go, guys. A lot of riding left. Thanks. Thank you, Tina. Brandon Seminuk leads the way, but still a lot of talent to come down this amazing course, including Brett Reeder and this man, Thomas Lamont of France. Now, he's sitting on a 73.60, but Kenan, in our two-run format, we only keep your best score, so that 73.60 can just go away. Well, if he wants to get on up the podium, he's got to have bangers from the off. 360 in. We've seen a lot of that today. He's got to wake up the judges with something different, getting a little over-rotated and landing low. So he's got the amp, and it's still not going to be it for him as he pulls off. You can see, you know, we were talking about what it takes to be a professional, Todd. You've got to stay cool in these situations. The guys are seeing what's being thrown out there. Unfortunately for Tomas, he over-rotates that truck driver a little bit. He had to take a crank. Gets the backflip tail whip. Now he gets past the danger point, but the over-rotation and the dabs of the foot is what hurt him. He gets a 34.60, which means he holds on to run one score, a 73.6. Anthony Mazzari set to drop in on his second and final run. His girlfriend at the bottom waiting for him to arrive, hopefully with a big score, an 82.40. Not bad right now, but remember the top score, Brandon Seminuk's 96.80. I have to point out, this is a rider that a lot of people, including myself, believe can make it to the top of the podium. In fact, he has done it. So it's just a matter of him getting the, getting the cobwebs out, the nerves out of him, and he's starting things off nicely, really got a lot of style, almost over-rotates a little bit. Look at that front flip, high landing. This guy is on the rail now. Off axis backflip, look at how high he's landing on these these jumps here, Todd, that's so important to keep your speed. I know you got Mother Nature with the gravity, but still, you got to stay smooth. Halfway down for Anthony Mazzari. So far, so good. And it's definitely, he's riding on the edge of control. I love it. Up top, he looked a little kind of crazy, but he's really toned it down, and he's focusing right now as he moves into the bottom portion of the course here at Joyride. Final feature for him. He can see the finish line. He'll backflip yes! off this. Yes, but he throws a bar spin also, so that's huge. Girlfriend's happy. Judges are happy. I'm sure he's happy to make it down unscathed. So for the young man from nearby Surrey, it is a second full pull for him, but what will the judges give him? Remember, he's shooting for a 96.81. That would put him into first. I'm really psyched to see this rider uh, come into his own. Like, he was such a prodigy, but coming back in and controlling all those nerves and getting down here, that was a bar spin to bar spin truck driver. That was incredible. And just the way he muscled that front flip around, he's looking through his arm to find the landing on that. Really creative rider. And then finally, just watch the bars as he does the bar spin, and then he has to crank around just a little bit more, so it's what they call a bus driver bar spin. And the score for Missouri, an 84, which puts him into third place. So with just two riders to go, Anthony Missouri has guaranteed himself a spot on the podium, Kenan. The last two guys to go will be the leaders, Brandon Semenuk has the lead with a 96.80 and still another run to take, as does Brett Reeder. Before we get to those final runs, let's check in with Tina Dixon. Well, I'm standing next to someone who's had a share of battles with Brandon Semenuk, and Brett Reeder is up next. From an athlete's perspective, what's going through his mind? Well, he knows he's going against someone who holds his cards close to his chest, and he, I mean, Brandon put out a couple tricks that no one had ever seen, no one even knew that he had, except for his, you know, best friend riding buddies. And uh, I mean, he's got more in the tank. So Brett knows that. I mean, the only times I've been able to beat him is like 
because I was willing to go bigger and badder than him. So Reader is going to have to go out of his comfort zone. You know, he's going to have to he's going to have to push his own limits. And um, but it's getting to the point where he's uh, you know you have to do your homework before, and he might not even have what it takes to beat him. But uh, he's going to do everything he can. I know that. Well, both of them do have one more run, guys. Brett Reader up next. All right, thank you very much, Tina. So a nice bit of insight there from Cam Zink as you look at our final two competitors. Brandon Semenuk on the left, Brett Reeder on the right. Do you agree with Cam's assessment? 100%, absolutely. And if you didn't do your homework, you know, you may have just laid your cards on the table in the first run. That might be it for you. So Brett Reeder has one run. He has to get a 96.8 to go into first place. Otherwise, Brandon Semenuk will be the last man down the mountain. It'll be just a ride for glory. Starts off with that backflip off the drop. Truck driver goes around oh. and he goes down. That is it. It is over. So Brandon Semenuk becomes the first three-time champion of Joyride as Brett Reeder comes unglued early on. And a nice souvenir for the nearly 30,000 fans, but this is probably not the way Brett Reeder wanted to end his day. Definitely not the way he wanted to end his day. He yanks that backflip off. Look at how he travels a little bit to the side. That's just from the sheer force of cranking it around. But here's where things went wrong. The truck driver, watch the back wheel. He over-rotates, mm. and I can tell you, over-rotating like that is from being over-amped. He had a lot of butterflies. They probably affected his riding. So Brandon Semenuk sits alone atop the course knowing that he's already won this event for a record third time. He's gonna drop in because the fans that have turned out for this great week of riding, they wanna see the champion take one more run down this amazing course. And he gives them something to cheer for, not holding back. And a tuck, yeah, he's gonna chill out. He starts off big, but you know what? He's a smart man. He survived here at Joyride and there's plenty more freestyle mountain biking to do this year. So it's a victory run, and he's just gonna go enjoy the sounds of the crowd. Ken, and what's amazing about this, at his young age, this will be his sixth time on the podium here at Crankworks. And when you bring the world's best, to be on that podium six times, this guy has absolute staying power. Oh, he certainly does. And to do it in your own backyard, I mean, that's, that's important to note also. Just the level that this rider is riding at is incredible. He loves to push the envelope. And like you heard Cam Zink say, he pulled out some tricks that we have not seen him do before. And what did I tell you earlier when we were talking about the judges' breakdown? It's about progression. And it is official. Brandon Semenuk becomes the first man to win Joyride three times. What a performance by Brandon Semenuk. It came down to the final run by Brett Reeder, unable to land that trick. So it is Semenuk in the 96.80 that gets the win. Brett Reeder grabs second place. Anthony Mazzari holds on for third, but what an amazing performance by all of our competitors here at Joyride. You know, I have to say about Brett Reeder, he did a fantastic job, but he's going to go home, trust me, and he's going to have something new for next season. So with the pressure on by his friend and competitor, Brett Reeder, a safety run was out of the question for Brandon Semenuk's first run. In the last three years of Joyride, Brandon has always fallen on his first run, two of those times on the final feature, but not today. Brandon pulled a cork 720 off the final whale tail feature, a trick that has never been done on a step down in the history of the competition. But that wasn't the only history Brandon would make today. At only 23, this win makes him the first to ever win Joyride three times. A huge congratulations to Brandon Semenuk on taking today's Red Bull signature moment. And Ken in this event is all about progression. We certainly saw that today from Brandon Semenuk. Definitely did with those Cork 720s. And not only did he do a Cork 720 at the top, he did it off the step down. Makes things more difficult to spot your landing and control your rotation. And he's standing by with Tina. Brandon, the only rider to have won Joyride now three times, and you also defended your title. How monumental is this? You earned it. Uh, it's so hard to describe. It's like such a relief, like so much stress. Just coming into this event, just such a big event, huge crowd, friends and family, hometown. It's just like this crazy buildup, and yeah, I'm so stoked. 
hard was Brett pushing you? Oh my God, Brett's first run, like, I didn't expect him to push it that hard. And then like, I, you know, he did such a clean run. And I basically, I was like, okay, like straight to an A run. Like there's no like messing about. And you were doing new tricks, in including that cork 720 off the bottom. But how did you keep so calm and collected? You made it look so easy. Just willing my way through the course. I don't know, like obviously lots of practice, but I was so nervous. Like I did not think it was going to go that well. Congratulations. Three times for you at Joyride. Thank you. Thank All right, guys. All right, thank you very much, Tina, for all your hard work. Final housekeeping notes. Anthony Missouri remains in first in the FMB. Brandon moves into second and Brett to third. All right, Kenan, what an amazing event. Your final thoughts. Just really love the way that Seminar came down and progressed in his first run. Just incredible. Two down the gauntlet. Also want to shout out to Anthony Missouri. He really did a fantastic job controlling those nerves. He is at top of the leaderboard for the standings right now at the FMB. And how about Brett Reeder? What a performance he threw down. That first run score really started things off. So that'll do it for us. Right now, we send it over to Sal Masakela. An absolutely amazing competition. Thank you guys so much for hanging with us here at Joyride at Crankworks Whistler in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. And congratulations to the local boy, Brandon Semenuk, on his win and the first rider to ever win Red Bull Joyride. Not once, not twice, but three times. Also, big ups to Brett Breeder for coming in second and really giving him a run for his money, and Anthony Mazzea for rounding out the podium in third. We will see you next time.